quick pre-video note. Um, I am sick, so I'm going to sound a bit nasally in this video. And two, I really enjoyed making videos like these. This whole PVM thing in Dofus, I've never done that really as far as I've done it on Nilixel. Um, I spent my like first 10 years playing the game pretty much within like 2,000 to 5,000 achievement points. And now I'm at 8,000 on Nilixel after starting fresh, starting with no connections, never bought O-Grinds, never did anything on this to help me. And it's just like, it's an entirely different experience. So I totally, uh, you know, I'm totally in love with the game right now. Uh, with that being said, uh, I enjoyed making this video a ton. I enjoyed, you know, figuring out the mechanics to Anoris, and I enjoyed, you know, actually being able to complete it. Um, if you guys like this type of video, suggest dungeons in the comments that you might want to see. If you're an Elio and you need help with them, I can make it in a tutorial fashion. And I, yeah, I guess that's it. I'm not really, I don't really have the comments to class change right now, so I can't do it in any other class other than Elio. But if you guys just find this kind of stuff interesting, I can uh, make more. So if you guys want to see any specific dungeons, please leave them in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I know we've been pretty rude to everyone with our upload schedule but hey at least we're uploading something you know it's, there's a silver lining uh thanks for watching once again i uh, hope you enjoy all right guys so in this video i'm going to be teaching you guys how to do four foot manor or anorin anoris the shushis uh solo as nilio i'm going to be running it through with a friend uh he's going to have no set and he's going to be at zero hp so he's going to die immediately um where I'm starting, I don't think you'll be hit uh, first by Anoris, so there's no worries. Um, and yeah, the gameplay should be exactly the same as if you were running it alone. Um, anyway, so the spells we're going to be taking are pretty much just anything that moves. So co or, uh, like Convulsion, Sermon, Bullying. Uh, you're going to be wanting to push things away every now and then. It's just helpful. It's not necessary, but it's definitely going to make the fight easier. Uh, coalition and uh, Focus just some basic stuff uh curative palm is important and neutral and portal you definitely want to take neutral not interruption here just for the last strat and taking normal portals is just important um it allows you to do a bunch more damage so <clears throat> i'm going to be targeting the caragul first and the reason i'm doing that is because uh that thing it it, it sets up a damage sharing debuff on everything and that's just going to take way longer to kill anything. So if you target that thing, whenever the damage sharing debuff goes off, you're going to be able to just sort of blitz that thing and get rid of it. And then you're going to kill the other two, the ghoul again and the whatever the heck the other thing's name is, uh, really quick. And then you can actually deal with the enemies. But until then, you're going to have to target the uh, Karagul. So that's that. And I'm going to fast forward when I finish killing that thing. While you and me repeat This bittersweet heat Is suffocating I'm waiting And always hesitating Kryptonite desires Set my heart afire Heart on fire Set my heart afire All right. So, I just finished killing that thing, and I actually got really close to dying. That usually doesn't happen. I just made a misplay, and I got, you know, I ended my turn uh, closer to these mobs than I would have liked. And, you know, one thing led to another, and I just made a mistake. Uh, regardless, from here on, it's actually pretty easy. I'm just going to run back and forth, heal up whenever I can, and kill the next two mobs, and try to single out Anoris. There's nothing special about these guys. They're both relatively mid to low range, so as an Elio, it should be no problem. Uh, you can run back and forth um, each time, uh, and if they can't hit you in one turn, they probably won't be able to hit you on the next, as long as they don't have Anoris' MP buff. But you should always be paying attention to that, just to make sure that you're not going to run into any problems. Uh, this is where Curative Palm is really important. Uh, turns like this that are going to be pretty boring, pretty passive. Uh, using Curative Palm to get your HP back is really important. Um, Ivory is super helpful in this dungeon, so you're going to want to be using that. 
um, if you have one. If not, it's still doable. It's just you can make less mistakes. So if you're trying to like leech it as an Elio, I highly recommend taking an Ivory. These things will touch you early on in the game, and it's just gonna, you know, make it a lot easier if you have an Ivory. But not everyone has one. Not everyone can afford one. Not everyone has quested for one, and I totally understand. So just do the best you can if you don't have one, and if you do, then this should be a breeze. Um, I'm gonna fast forward to when I've killed these two guys, and then I'm gonna get started on Anaris and explain the strategy. Okay, so now that I've killed all the other mobs except for Anoris, I now need to set her up in a way where I can manage her teleport. Um, I actually haven't been able to find the strategy on this dungeon, so I don't know what the benefit of being hit by her is, but essentially this is just a way to keep her pathing really consistent, and so... That's the best bet I could say on this thing. I don't really understand it. Regardless, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up the portals in a way that I can hit her from the, across the map, essentially, every single turn. And when she teleports to me, she teleports onto a portal and sends herself back to the other side of the map, therefore not allowing her to ever touch me um, on any turn and me allowing, or allowing me to hit her on every turn. So, that's that. And I'm going to sort of fast forward and show you the setup. Uh, I didn't actually understand it. Um, I was sort of winging it as I was doing this. I, I knew how I wanted to go about it. And I had sort of like theory crafted a few ideas before I went into this. But this is actually my first time. So <coughs> not my first time running it. But my first time actually trying to like solo it with this strategy. Um, so yeah. I'm just going to fast forward until I get that out so you guys can see it. Alright, so here it is. I got it. And essentially what it looks like is two portals, um, two away from me. And my other portal is set up so that she can't walk through the other one if she runs to it. And just a very casual setup. Sort of anything like this will work. Um, as long as she teleports in front of you, like she will, and you always end one cell behind the portal, uh, she's going to be uh, sort of putting yourself in a bad position where you can just abuse that for the rest of the fight. Now... The thing I want to mention is if you're not paying attention, she can get to a spot where she can hit you, and that's why I didn't move this portal one forward, because I actually try it for the last few turns to see what she would have done, because it would have made it a lot faster had I moved these this one portal one cell in front of me, um, and so I didn't have to neutral it each turn uh, and then take a single step forward, but she was able to actually hit me from where she was. Uh, so that would have been not able to be something that I could sustain for the rest of the fight. Um, you could probably copy this exact same like manner, but as long as you understand the idea behind it, you really don't need to copy this. You can do it any other way you want. Um, Anaris has a very confusing AI because she doesn't have line of sight, but if she's far enough away from you and she has no um, reason to go a different direction, she's going to take the same exact path each time. Um, you also want to pay uh, uh, pay attention for her for the buffs that she gives you. She will give you a 50% uh, final damage buff and a 3 MP or 2 MP buff, which is important to you know utilize when you can. Uh, set up these uh, the portals and her teleport so that on turns that you do get this 50 final damage buff, she's going to be... Uh, you know, in a position where you can hit her through the portals and not, like, without them, like I did. I think there are a few times where I'm going to be hitting quite a lot without portals, and that's because I had that buff on me, which I only understood existed until, like, you know, halfway through the fight. Uh, this strategy can be used to get the duo achievement. Um, 
it takes a bit longer um, and a bit more tries, but it is possible. You just sort of have to be very efficient about everything you do. Um, you know, get a set that can do a lot of damage. Mine isn't the best for that. Um, it's not even complete right now, so I, it's, you know, I don't have like good shield. I don't even have, I'm still wearing my Gelano. So still got quite a bit of damage that I'm missing, but as you can see, this is still doable and I ended up uh, finishing it. So I think it was only like 26 minutes for the whole dungeon, which is not too bad. Not too bad. I would prefer it to be like 15, but, uh, you know, as I said, this was one of my first times, uh, running this. So definitely, um, definitely got room for improvement. <laughs> So that's that, and I'm just going to fast forward the rest. Kryptonite desires set my heart afire 